You can come or you can't. You don't have to. That's okay. Come on up. Don't be shy. Good morning. Hi. How are you? My name's Kara. Hi, Kara. My name's Luke. Oh, what do you have there? Wow, lots of fun this morning. So, this is a oh, wow. This is a kitty. That is amazing. I love kitties and Pokemon. This morning, what were we carrying? Do you know what those branches are called? Well, I, don't, I don't know what they're called, but palm branches. Palm branches. That's right. And in today's gospel, we use the palm. You know about those palm branches, yeah. So in today's gospel, we use the palm branches. And, and what they did, back when Jesus was entering Jerusalem, they would throw those palm branches into the aisle. And do you know what else? They would take off their coats and other shirts, and they would throw those in the aisle too. Can you imagine why they would do that? No. They would do it so that when the king, so when Jesus, the Messiah, came into town, the dust would stay on the floor. It would keep from the dust rising up from the hoofbeats of the colt or the donkey. And we might get to see a donkey this morning later. I don't know about that. And so, can you, can you think of a time when you have to get ready for someone coming to your place? Have you ever, do you have to get ready for, I don't know, company ever? Have you ever had anybody come visit you at your house? And what kind of stuff do you have to do to get ready? You have to clean, yeah. What else do you have to do? Yeah. Maybe you do you cook food sometimes. Yeah. I yeah. Help. And you help? Yeah, we try to help though. Oh, you yeah. try to help? That's amazing. Yeah, I cooked pigs in the blanket. Cooked pigs in the blanket. Well, you guys know all about getting ready for the Messiah. So this morning, when we heard the, the gospel, we, they were getting, the disciples and the people of Israel were getting ready for Jesus to come. So thank you and good morning. You can go back to your seats now. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, 
and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Good morning. You can't always get what you want. I'm sure you've all heard this said to you at one time or another, maybe from your parent or caregiver, when you asked for something you were sure you could not live without. For those of you who like the music of the Rolling Stones, you will recognize that phrase as the title and part of the lyrics from one of their songs. It goes something like this. No, you can't always get what you want. Come on! No, you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometime, you might just find you get what you need. <laughs> Eight o'clock worship this morning. <laughs> I wonder if the Rolling Stones were familiar with today's gospel reading when they wrote this. You can't always get what you want, but you might just get what you need, was certainly true for the people lining the streets of Jerusalem waiting for Jesus. So many people in Jerusalem, they had come from all over the Mediterranean basin for the Passover feast. Some of them knew that Jesus was at Bethany and they knew what he could do. Yet the one thing that had them most expectant was that he was coming to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, the place where tradition said the Messiah would come. So they stood at the side of the road and watched and waited for him to come and proclaim himself the Messiah. We call it Palm Sunday because maybe, just maybe, there really were palm branches that were being thrown into the road a sort of poor person's red carpet treatment. But some of the people did even more than throw down branches. They took off the clothes right off their backs, took the shirts off of themselves, and threw them into the road in front of him too. So that clip-clop of the hooves of the colt he was riding was muffled by shirts, shawls, and cloaks spread out covering the dust. Can you imagine if we were to do that for Oliver the donkey this morning? I guess that's just what you do when you're waiting for the Messiah. His disciples had borrowed a colt for his ride into the city. And truth be told, this was both good news and bad news. It told the people that he was a man of peace. He was unlike the Roman generals who always came to town riding on a war horse. But it also meant that he was a servant. Riding into the city of Jerusalem on a borrowed colt? Could this really be the one they were waiting for? 
Don't kings wear purple and have servants and look around with a pomp arrogance? They had been waiting for a long time. So as he entered their view, the crowd praised God in loud voices. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Their shout went up and washed through the gathered crowds. The long-awaited Messiah had finally come. That's when the Pharisees decided to step in. Perhaps they were embarrassed with the wild enthusiasm of the people. Perhaps they thought Roman authorities would smell insurrection and come with a terrible vengeance against the nation. Perhaps they want to warn Jesus of the danger that's ahead for him personally. And so they said to Jesus, Teacher, please stop. But Jesus didn't give any orders, and he didn't stop. Yes, he knew that violence awaited him at journey's end, but he simply kept on riding that colt, knowing his royalty was not a spectacle, rather his power was but a humble obedience. In obedience, he had traveled along the way, eating and drinking with sinners and remaining faithful to God's desire to gather the rejected and the lost. Then he entered the city to make peace with the offering of his own life. Professor Tom Long says that one year on the day after Christmas, his family moved from one state to another. In order to set up housekeeping as swiftly as possible, they had carefully marked the boxes containing the more urgently needed belongings with such labels as towels, kitchen utensils, and as I can attest, coffee maker. These ones were opened right away, but it was many weeks before the last few boxes were opened. And having just finally moved into my own house yesterday, I can attest we labeled each box with a number, and when you get to, you know, 280, 370, 2,964, you're not going to get to all of them right away. So, boxes labeled stuff from the closet, miscellaneous, giant question mark, those didn't get opened until later. And finally, Professor Tom Long had opened one of these boxes and tumbled out a surprise. A stack of Christmas cards received just before they had moved. So there they were, in the middle of Lent, confronted by the familiar words from Luke. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. It must have been a bit like that for Jesus. As if a nearly forgotten Christmas card fell across his path as he rode down from the Mount of Olives. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven, cried the disciples. I think Luke wants us to know that these words we so happily send to each other at Christmas come with a Good Friday cost. The words sung at Jesus' birth are now marking his path to Calvary. The angel's cry of glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to all people, was not merely a birth announcement, but a set of marching orders to which Jesus was obedient throughout his life. I wonder if any of the people who were part of the great and suspenseful drama of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem knew where those words had been said before. Or that all the small and tattered strands of a story were being gathered together and woven into a great story of our redemption. Or that the king they were waiting for was unlike any king they had ever known before. No, you can't always get what you want, but you might just find you get what you need. Like the people lining the road into Jerusalem, we too have been given what we need. 
Last Sunday, Franklin Thomas Johnson and Ella Elizabeth Mouse were brought to this very font. There with the water and God's word, they were given new birth, cleansed from sin and promised eternal life. We call them God's beloved children. This, because Jesus didn't fulfill the expectations of a people who had been waiting for an earthly king, one who would help them fight their battles and reclaim the city of Jerusalem as God's holy place. Instead, with the crucifixion, with the dying and the rising, every single person from every time and place can be washed in that life-giving water and receive new and eternal life. It is this that allows you to live the Christian life, to assume the pattern of Jesus' obedience, to allow glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to all people, to become a drumbeat marking your own steps along the pilgrim's way. May this be so for each of you. Amen.